Hi friends, welcome back to PS Desert channel. In this video, I will show you how to add texture to the background in Photoshop. In this tutorial, I will walk you through step by step on how to easily remove unwanted elements from the background, refine the texture and blend it with the original background and also adjust the overall tone and mood of the image. We will be using non-destructive editing techniques to ensure that you can make changes without altering the original image. So let's get started and create a visually appealing backgrounds with a seamless and natural texture effect. For this demonstration, I chosen this image. Upon looking at the image, I noticed a couple of elements that I wasn't particularly fond of the top three branches and the bottom left line on the wall. But we don't need to worry, we can easily remove them to improve the overall composition of the image and create more visually appealing backgrounds. To get started, let's duplicate the background layer, Ctrl or Command plus J. Duplicating the layer allows us to work non-destructively, which means we can make changes without altering the original image. Next, we will grab the lasso tool from the toolbar and use it carefully, select the areas that we want to delete. Once the areas are selected, we will head over to the edit menu and choose content aware fill. In the content aware fill window, we will set the output to the current layer and click OK. This amazing feature in Photoshop fill in selected areas with the content that matches the surrounding background, giving us a seamless result. Now let's repeat the same process to remove the unwanted line on the wall. Using the lasso tool again, we will carefully select the line area and then go to edit content aware fill. Again, we will set the output to current layer and click OK. The content aware fill feature will do its magic again, blending the area with the surrounding backgrounds in a way that it looks natural and seamless. All right. Now that we have successfully removed the unwanted elements from the background, let's move on to separate the subject from the background. We will go to select menu and choose select and mask, which opens up a new window where we can fine tune our selection. In this case, I'm going to select the cloud detail result option because it gives accurate and perfect selections in most of the cases. So I recommend you to use the cloud detail results option and click on select subject to automatically refine the selection around our subject. If needed, we can further refine the selection using the refine hair option. Once we are satisfied with the selection, we will set the output as create a new layer with the layer mask and then click OK. Next drag and drop the new texture background onto the image and scale it, rotate it, position it, whatever you do according to your image. At this point, the texture may appear a bit flat and unnatural. So we will need to blend it with the original background to make it look more realistic. So let's change the blending mode of the texture layer to multiply. This mode allows the new texture to take on the colors from the original background helping it blend in seamlessly. Next, we will add a layer mask to the texture layer and then go to image, apply image. In the apply image window, we will keep the settings as they are, but we will check the invert option. Because this will help the texture blend with the shadows in the image, creating a cohesive and natural look and hit OK. To further blend the texture with the highlights in the image, let's duplicate the texture layer with the layer mask and change the blending mode to screen. We will also invert the mask, Ctrl or Command plus I to reveal the texture only in the highlighted areas. To keep our layers organized, we can group them these two texture layers by right clicking and select group from layers. This makes it easy for us to manage and adjust the texture effect as needed. Now that we have the texture blending nicely with the shadows and highlights, let's move on to adjusting the overall tone and mood of the background. 
So far it looking good, but looking at the image, I can see that the background seems to be on the brighter side, which is all right. But I want to darken it a bit to create a more dramatic effect. To do that, I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer and drag the curves downwards in the shadows area. Now let's add some shadows to the subject to make it pop and add that. I will hold the control or command key and click on the subject layer mask to make a selection. Once the selection is active, I will create a new layer and fill it with black color. Now I need to soften the edges of the shadows to make them look more natural. To do that, I will go to filter, blur and apply Gaussian blur. I will give it a higher radius, maybe around 135 pixels works good in this case and click OK. Next, I will change the blending mode of the shadow layer to overlay or soft light to blend it with the image. Then I will add a layer mask to the shadows layer and use a soft round brush with white color as the foreground and paint on the bottom side parts of the subject which reveals the shadows. And I will also lower the brush flow to around 10% and paint very lightly on top areas of the subject to create a more realistic effect. Now to make sure I have merged copy of all layers, I will create a stamp visible copy by pressing Ctrl plus Shift plus Alt plus C or Command plus Shift plus Option plus E on Mac to create a new layer that merges all visible layers and convert this layer to a smart object for non-destructive editing. To further enhance the image, I will go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter and open this layer in Camera Raw. First, I will going to adjust the basic settings like exposure, highlights, shadows, whites and blacks according to the desired effect I want to achieve. Then I will move on to effects section where I can add a little vignetting maybe around minus 23 works good and some grain at the level of 10 to add a touch of vintage feel. Next, I will go to the calibration tab and adjust the hues and saturation of reds, greens and blues to fine tune the color grading. This step requires some attention to achieve the perfect color balance for the desired effect. Finally, I will adjust the temperature and tint to further enhance the overall mood of the image. I want to add some more vignette, so I will increase it to around minus 41 which looks good to me. Once I am satisfied with the changes, I will click OK to apply them. And there you have it. The before and after comparison shows the transformation of the image with the adjustments and enhancements we made. I hope you found these steps helpful in achieving the desired photo effect. Thank you so much for watching PS Desired Photoshop tutorials. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay updated with our latest exclusive videos. Don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any future tips and tricks. We are here to help you elevate your Photoshop skills and create stunning images. See you again in next video. Take care.